Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I'm hiking today with my daughter, Ruth. We are in Beaverton, which is on the west side of Portland, at the Lawani Hart uh, Nature Trail. And I thought I would show you a few things here, specifically because there have been a couple of posts lately in some local gardening groups asking, I have a backyard with really tall, mature conifers, be they um, western red cedar, be they pine trees, be they dug fir what can I grow underneath? Because right now all I've got is these big trees and then just kind of like bare dirt or wood chips. What can I grow in that environment? And I think they can be kind of tricky places to develop a garden. And in permaculture, we look to patterns in nature and we try to replicate them in our own cultivated gardens to not only create more beautiful lush habitat, more um, productive spaces, but also to create more functional spaces because if it's working in nature and we have the same conditions in our garden, we wanna take what's working out in the wild and we wanna harness that and use it in our own gardens. So since we're here in an area that has large conifer trees all around us, and a natural understory, which creates a diverse polyculture that looks very much like a woodland garden. Why not take a few moments and look around at the patterns in nature, look at what is happening in nature here, what is growing well, and see if those are plants that you wanna take home for your garden. My yard is a certified backyard wildlife habitat. It is really important to me to include natives in my garden, not only because they thrive in my climate, obviously they're native here, but also because they create habitat for wildlife. So when we look to these wild spaces, these kind of zone four spaces in our communities, we can see what is doing well here. And if we could kind of um, learn from those, those spaces and we could replicate those things in our own gardens where the same set of circumstances exist. So if you have those big mature coniferous trees in your yard, which lots of folks in the Pacific Northwest do, look around with me today and see if some of these might work in the understory to create a more beautiful lush naturalistic garden where you're at. So you can see here we are under a fully closed canopy. And all of these large conifers are gonna be just sucking up water. So what you have is a shady situation that is predominantly dry shade. And these are all native plants that do very, very well here. So let's take a look at some of them. Now, right off the bat, I can see some salal here. I have this in my shade garden. It is an edible. It is related to blueberries, as you can see by the shape of the flower. It spreads and it will form a clump that is anywhere from about two to about three and a half feet high. Really lovely little white blossoms and edible blackberries that are formed on it later in the year. Pollinators love it. Now it may seem like an unlikely choice, but there are native trailing blackberries in the Pacific Northwest. Not the aggressive Himalayan blackberry, but our own native blackberries that provide exceptional food and are low to the ground, hence the name trailing blackberry. They are thorny. You can see here there's native elderberries. Sambucus cerulea is native in the Pacific Northwest. They do get up to 25 feet tall, but they do thrive in the understory like this. Speaking of other kind of tree looking plants, the vine maple is a lovely choice for a shady spot. If you can see here, it has kind of greenish bark and it can be kind of floppy and arching. We'll look at some more of them as we move along. Kind of floppy and arching and really architectural looking. A really lovely choice. There's a number of edible mushrooms that love this kind of habitat underneath a vine maple and have a symbiotic relationship with them. Since I've seen it posted in a number of gardening groups lately, let's talk about this one. This is Gallium apparine also called cleavers or bed straw or sticky willy. It is a native, it has medicinal properties. If it goes to seed, it is an annual. If it goes to seed, the seeds are very sticky, particularly in your dog's fur, so be aware of that. But that is a native ground cover. Right next to it, we have snowberry, which I have in my garden. I also have gallium apparine in my garden because it's native and it comes up wherever it wants. Snowberry is a lovely choice. One of my favorite choices for a mid, small or mid-sized shrub.
Here's one of my favorites. I've talked about it repeatedly. I have in my shade garden. This is thimbleberry. It does slowly spread, but it's pretty easy to pull up the volunteers. You can see here's the main patch here. It'll get five and a half feet tall-ish. A lot of native bees really go for the flowers. You can see one of the volunteers here that'll pop up a little ways away from the parent. They're quite easy to pull up. They do need full shade. They get sunburned quite easily. Sword fern underneath. Great choice for drier shade if you want a native fern. You can see here about two and a half or three feet tall. All of this diverse mix in here. This is also berry. It used to be called Indian plum, but that's an outdated name, but your nursery might still call it that. Also berry has um, a lovely delicate flower early in the season. You can see here a hazel. So all of this creates a really lovely naturalistic um, polyculture because it is nature. So it is a stacking in naturally of those different size plants. Like here, this hazel has a little more sun, so it's gotten quite a bit bigger back here in the back. Vine maples and also berry underneath. Coming down lower, we have the thimble berries. We have the sword ferns. We have the gallium aparine. And then there's some of the younger plants that will eventually mature and get taller. Like again, a younger vine maple, a younger also berry. Just creates that lovely look. So when you are looking to make a garden in a dry, coniferous, closed canopy, you can't really do any better than simulating what we have in nature to begin with. Because Mother Nature has done a fabulous job painting a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. In areas where a little bit of sun cuts through, you may find Nootka or Bald Hip Roses, both native roses here in Oregon volunteering. I don't generally recommend Nootka Roses unless you have room to let them ramble because they will fill in, you can see here, all down in here, anywhere there's sunshine, it has populated itself. It can really take over, so just be aware of that if you've got a spot of sun. A little big leaf maple seedling doing the best it can to thrive here. This on its own will get very, very, very large if it can clamber up and get enough sunshine. We'll see if it'll make it. So really we're looking at a system right off of a busy street that is just wild and lush and using, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine different native perennials, we get a lovely thriving wildlife habitat under full shade, in dry shade using the plants that don't need irrigation, that want to live in this kind of situation, are evolved to thrive in this kind of situation, we create a low effort naturalistic garden for ourselves that we know will be successful. I talk a lot on this channel about setting yourself up for success. Go with something that nature has already shown us is going to be successful and do well. And you can't go wrong with that. If you look to those patterns in nature, and sometimes as a gardener, the best solution is to just straight up copy a patch of nature in your landscape. you know that you are gonna have a garden that is going to thrive without tons of labor and or heartache on your part. Here we have Mahonia, Oregon grape, another great native choice that brings in the pollinators. I have a whole video on Mahonia. Really easy to grow, does very, very well here. As I mentioned in my recent video on shade loving ground cover, you can see here in the wild fringe cup Talima grandiflora, 
a great choice if you are replicating a naturalistic woodland garden using natives for the lowest layer, for your ground cover layer. They've spread here and inter intermingled with the uh, trailing blackberries and the gallium apparine to form the ground cover layer here. Once again, you can see how the native roses will form a thicket. So maybe you have an area under your dense canopy where you are looking for kind of more of a thorny protection at the edge of your property. You might think about something like this. So thanks for watching with us today. I hope that you found some inspiration for your woodland garden, for your maybe difficult dry shade places in your garden. And I hope that you will tune back in again tomorrow from my permaculture garden in Portland, Oregon. In the interim, check out my Patreon down below. Thanks.